On today's episode, we give you our reactions to a big divisional round of playoff football, and then we break down the truth, the second part of the truth about quarterbacks, some more interesting names in this episode as well. Make sure you subscribe so you can get our videos all season long and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. It's going to be a good show. A run of the mill show. Welcome in. For whatever reason, it feels like it's been an eternity since we last did a show. Well, we are down to Tuesday, Thursday release shows of our main podcast, and uh, this is this is that long break. This is, you know, we're waiting from our last recording, which we recorded on Wednesday, all the way to this morning on a Tuesday, and and we've had uh, we've had quite a time in between. Yeah, yeah, just uh, observing the National Football League, right? <laughs> yes, yes. There Lots were there were some football it's, games. It has been observed. Yeah, Mike is uh he's in full winter mode over there. You you have you been outside? I it's been <laughs> crazy in Arizona because it's, it's dark, it's raining nonstop. Yes. I am I am in apparel dressed for the cold now, and see, the rain. Part of why Mike is so defensive about that right now is because there is a multi year um war going on between Mike and Jason's sensibilities. Because <laughs> yeah. Jason regularly dresses in like summer gear, when I'm in shorts and a t-shirt, or, baby, and and flip flops often, and then occasionally will to Mike complain about, "Ooh, I'm a little cold," <laughs> yes. and my Mike is always like, "Then put clothes <laughs> on." But we're inside. The temperature in shot inside should just. It's not raining inside. It's not snowing inside. It should just be a normal temperature. I can wear anything inside. Right? Like, why Why would that make any sort of. difference? Because to get to that temperature, you have to use artificial heat, which artificial heat is is the worst. Like, it makes the air feel bad. It stinks. Everything about heat is You always have to go from bad. You know, based on the temperature outside, you either it gets a little cold inside, yeah. then the heat turns on, or it gets a little hot inside, and then the cold turns on. Problem is, Mike wants me to wear, like, sweatpants, like the joggers or whatever. <laughs> Right. I just, if I wear that, if I am out in the snow in those, I am sweating. So this is just there's no world where I can wear those. You need tearaways. There we go. Like then the warm like NBA warm ups. Mm -hmm. And yeah. then whenever it's like I'm a little warm, I get to rip my pants off. I'm yeah. in. Yeah, you not that it's you, a whole spectacle. Yeah, yeah. Welcome in. Uh happy to be with you. January twenty third. This is a uh we normally record our Tuesday, Thursday shows a day early. Uh, it didn't work out that way this week, so we're we're in here recording early on Tuesday. So apologies for a slight delay on the release time, but not, not for me. Um, but we had we had some football. Um, we had the Ravens dispose. I mean, all the games were close at halftime, so that that kind of made them exciting. But the Ravens disposed of the Texans. A heck of a year for Houston. Absolutely demolishing the pick that the Cardinals acquired, just <laughs> wrecking us. Um, but they're well on their way to a bright future. Buffalo, Kansas City. Oh, brother. This was the most, I think, gut-wrenching of the games, if you're not asking Al Borland. Because, you know, the history between Josh Allen and Patrick Mahomes, Mahomes to his sixth consecutive AFC title game in six years starting as a quarterback. You must feel Can we is there like a can we put a cap? Like if you make it five years in a row. Oh, like they did with us in the podcast awards? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you put if you make it to the to the championship game five years in a row, then they name the championship game after <laughs> you the following year and the other teams get to the Patrick Mahomes championship yeah, game. And you but you You're not allowed. You have to take a year off. For the rest of the league. I mean, Buffalo had every chance to win this ball game. They, they just did. couldn't adjust on the fly well enough, in my opinion. They were running the football well. The fourth quarter, the Chiefs made a huge adjustment to stop the run. I think James Cook had negative four yards in that quarter. And 
frankly, they didn't have the weapons to, I mean, they could do a little swing pass to Dalton Kincaid. Who's look, Kincaid's going to be a big part of the offense moving forward. I, I try, I believe that, but well, Diggs, Diggs didn't come up with a big play. Diggs is done. And Gabe Davis is a free agent. And so how much do you mean what you said? I, I actually do mean it quite a bit. There was, this was, um, probably about a month ago on the dynasty podcast, we were talking about Diggs's long-term outlook. And since that episode, I've, I've really shifted because I was still a believer at that point in the, the, the future fantasy, uh, ability is, and asset of is Diggs. That, is that because through the first six weeks, he was a hundred or more yards in five of six of them? Yeah. I mean, he was great and it's, it's unbelievable. The, the, the fall off and it's, you know, you can, you can blame whatever you want. You could say, oh, it's age, it's, he's slowing down, he's not as good. You could say it's the Joe Brady and the change of scheme. and all, Whatever it is, it is the new normal. And it's been done so much that you cannot view Stephon Diggs as you know, a, a, a reliable star asset for fantasy production or for NFL production. I mean, he missed opportunities in that game, uh, you know, dropped what should have been a giant bomb touchdown pass. And... Uh, I think moving forward, you're going to need to retool this offense. Yeah, I know that Josh Allen came out this morning and and supported and endorsed Joe Brady. Was Stephon Diggs in the back? Like, no, no, so, I wave it off. So just for perspective, because uh, uh, Ian Harditz put this out there, in the last 10 Bills games, Khalil Shakir has 462 receiving yards. Stephon Diggs has 422. So you're wow, like, so he out. Did it. Yeah, you're like, oh, he gained more yards. Here's the targets in that span. Shakir, 37. Diggs, 80. <laughs> that is... That doesn't seem believable. It it, it doesn't. You're telling yeah, me that, that, you know, well over double, n near near a triple the targets, and and you're, you're saying that you have fewer yards? Fewer total yards from Stephon Diggs. It's unacceptable. Yeah, so your future is 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 shady, and you have an offense that needs reliable pass catchers. Uh, so <laughs> hold on a second. <laughs> you know, if you didn't try to correct me, uh, then, no, you I would let it go. You want to let it go. So, so Jason <laughs> in his in his discussion here, he goes, he goes, he's well over double targets. Yeah, almost triple. Is the quote you said. That's fair, because that's what uh, I said. And, and it's like, I'm looking at this, and it's like, Shakir 37, Diggs 80. So I, I put in our Slack channel, well over double, that's three over. And what did you say? Oh, well, I corrected you, because you were yeah. super wrong. <laughs> it was six over, which is double what you said. <laughs> I feel like six, that's well over double. Yeah, thank you, Mike. It's, not, mean, near it's triple, not near triple, but it's well over double. It's um, well under triple. <laughs> it's, yeah. It's a triple double. The, you know. Yeah, tomato, so, tomato. So, the no. point is, he had a ton more targets, produced fewer yards. That's what's happened over ten games. I think Shakir is worthy of the inverse reaction, though. I mean, I think Shakir will be a part of uh, the offense moving forward, where where you'd have some. We'll have discussions in draft season for sure. And then, look, the the Chiefs they got it done. They got it done. They they just <laughs> they tried not to, like the, giving the, the ball to McCall Hardman. The Buffalo Bills said. Here, Kansas City, we would like you to win this game. Just we're, we're done. We're, we're tired of this game. We're gonna run a fake punt run on what, like fourth and six. Just go for the. You want to go for it? I'm not gonna judge you. I get it. So you're like, I don't. We don't want Mahomes to have the ball back. We need to do something right now. Go for it. You you have an MVP caliber quarterback, but a fourth and six run on a punt is ridiculous. And then the Chiefs to took, Demar Hamlin. The, yeah, the, the Chiefs took the the gift that the Buffalo Bills gave them. They said, no, we don't want this. We have Pacheco, who's the offense, or the, the, the engine of our offense, but we're going to go with a trick play to McCall Harmon, which Andy Reid, for all of his greatness, six straight AFC Championship games, for all of his greatness, he has so many of these just, what are you doing? doing even oh, even when it works all the good like, plays what are you doing i've chosen to give to reed and all the bad ones i give to <laughs> naggy that's what i've chosen to do well it's, it's not just naggy though because andy reed has a history of getting way too tricky so kelsey five for 75 and two touchdowns encouraging for the future yeah on the other side the 49ers knocked off the packers the packers played a better football game than the 49ers for yeah. about 
55 of 60 minutes. Say, though, Brock Purdy won the game at the end, but he really tried to lose up until that point. I think with the Diggs play in the in the previous game and then looking at this Packer game, like the truth is you don't – I you know, the uh, Sean McDermott said they don't want to tear it down to the studs. And I, I get that because you're one play. You're one play from winning. Wait, the head coach on the hot seat is like, well, look, we should just run this we, back. We need to change nothing. <laughs> we're, well, everything's I mean, good. You were a play from the title game, though. That's the facts. And the Packers were in that boat, too. But you look at what happened in this game, and really it came down to two awful missed interceptions Yes, that fundamentally changed the game. And um, it was it was back and forth. Jordan Love tried to do too much at the end of this one. Um, the Packers' future is exceptionally bright. Yeah. I, it's hard to look at a franchise with more envy than where the Packers are positioned. Great head coach, great quarterback, young wide receivers, young, young talent. Young everything. I mean, um, they're, they're, their entire team is well, like Aaron 22 Jones years old. Not. Well, sure. Uh, but the, the rest of that team is so young. They're clicking, they're driving, and the truth is always just, how's the quarterback? And Jordan Love, he just looked legit through the entire playoffs until the very end he tried to play a little bit too much hero ball, which is hard to not do when you're literally on the game-winning attempt to drive. Um, but he, he looked great these playoffs. And the Niners, I want to I go back in the season and just say how important this, this offense needs Debo. When they lost three in a row, that was when they didn't have Debo three in a row, and all of a sudden the Niners looked like a trash franchise for about a month. Debo comes back, and they dominate. In this game, they lost Debo, and they could not move the ball. They, He is super important. Right now they're saying it's 50-50 as to whether he'll play in the conference championship game. Yeah, and it, it matters a ton. It, it's a little bit like when you remove pieces from Miami. And all of a sudden, they don't look the same. Uh, Debo is that fundamental. Uh, so, you know, they they squeeze it out. They get the victory. The Lions defeat Tampa Bay. Congratulations, Lions fans, you long-suffering crew. And then Zach Ertz is like, this is, you know what? <laughs> I, now's the time. Like, now's what, the time. What favor? What favor is owed to, to Zach Ertz? Like, what, what, is he, what has he done for someone on, on the Lions team? The fact that he can just sign with them now is comical. Yeah. Like, but, I mean, it doesn't hurt him. So. I think it was super brave of him to <laughs> do it this early and call his shot before. Like, he, you know, he didn't wait till the Super Bowl and say, well, who's in it? That's I right. I want a ring. That's right. He's going to say, I'm going to need to win two games. He's like, our Lions. <laughs> our Lions. <laughs> One pride. <laughs> that's the part that'll be so funny because it's like he's not going to play in the title game. I don't think. Probably not. So then then a couple snaps. Then his only snaps for this franchise will be in a Super Bowl if they make it. Oh, he'll be on that bus. <laughs> he'll be he, in the parade. He has, he has assured we them. We did it, Detroit. He has what if assured he called, them. I don't need to participate, okay? Just like like I'll be there, I'm gonna be ready, but don't worry about getting me on the field. <laughs> what if he caught the game winning touchdown for the Detroit Lions? Oh, what Super a good Bowl. story for him. That <laughs> <sighs> Well, any any fantasy uh, takeaways from the Detroit Tampa. I mean, Tampa has to bring back a quarterback. They have to bring back Mike Evans. I, I like the comments from Evans after the game. I thought that, I did not hear them. Yeah. In the locker room, he was still dealing with the defeat, obviously, but he's just like, I believe he said, show me that shmoney. <laughs> I don't know if that was a direct quote. I it think, was, I would like to be here, but also I would like a lot of money. <laughs> he said that, you know, it's rare for team for players to get to a play for one franchise and that's where he wants to be and that baker is criminally underrated and they want him back and Bowles wants him back so um uh, you know i think the odds of evans being back with baker next year which is probably your best case scenario for fantasy genuinely like it, it's tantalizing to say oh the talent of of mike evans you throw him onto kansas city or throw him somewhere else it just rarely works out that way especially late stage uh, career yeah. situations where, you know, I mean, Mike Evans, the numbers you put up this year, it's hard to say you could go somewhere and replicate that. Being Baker's go-to receiver in an offense, you already know is probably the best thing. That's my opinion. Like as a dynasty Evans manager, I'm actually rooting for that. When, when things are great, change is bad. That's almost always the truth. He was the wide receiver five 
on the course of the season, had 1,255 yards, 13 touchdowns. Yeah, you're you're not – you don't need change. You don't Please don't change that. Just do that again. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Brian Callahan signed as the uh, – they're going to be – the Titans are going to be hiring Brian Callahan, the offensive coordinator from the Cincinnati Bengals, to be their new head coach. That Jason, is, you are surprised. I am surprised. Um, I, I think the Titans are – I think they've been a pretty well-run franchise over the long term, and I don't know, man. I It just feels like you're going from Mike Vrabel, who has been a very good coach for the roster he's been given, in my opinion, to an unproven offensive coordinator who, I mean, maybe Callahan is great. He's obviously been good with the Bengals, but you, I have a hard time trusting offensive coordinators who have nonstop talent. And if you've got Joe Burrow and you've got Joe Mixon, you've got Jamar Chase, you got T. Higgins, okay, yeah, you you had a good offense. And maybe it was all him. I mean, not all him, but maybe he was a, a big key part of that. Obviously, Jake Browning did well, so maybe that's a, a feather in the cap. It just feels well, like – Well, I mean, this is about, to me, Will Levis. This is about trying to take a young quarterback, give him an offensive mind, not a defensive head coach, and maybe shape him a little bit. Sure, yeah. That's the um, – I, I mean, I, 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 mean I get it. I mean, I – I hope it works out well. Now was for Vrabel you. available to hire? <laughs> right. Would that have been a possible? He was hmm. actually. Yeah, I, uh, I I'm very interested to see where these coaches land, which we'll find out pretty soon. Quick break, and we're going to jump right into the second part of our quarterback truth episode. All right. It feels like a long time ago, but it was just last Thursday. We we covered the truth of the quarterback position, looked at the top 10 finishers of the 2023 season, Allen Hurts, Jackson, Prescott, uh, Love, Purdy, Mahomes, Goff, Mayfield, and Tua. And we're going to jump into the second portion of the quarterback position analysis today. And so, you know, the quarterback position for fantasy – what was the – give me the bullet points that we we drew out of Thursday. I mean, ultimately there were two, you know, league-winning type of picks in the top 30 at quarterback. Mahomes was not one of them. Yeah, I mean, basically the truth of the quarterback position was if you want true consistency, you had two options. You had Josh Allen and you had Jalen Hurts. Everyone else was very inconsistent, had plenty of bust games, uh, whether you were had a, a ton of great games like Lamar Jackson or – uh, whether you didn't, I mean, there was no one else consistent with the sole exception of really Joe Flacco. He only started four games for the fantasy season and was four for four and being very good and very relevant. And actually Kyler Murray was more, was more consistent than um, you felt because he really didn't have his, yeah, felt his, bad. his monstrous games. His floor was higher than a, an outright bust most often though. Yeah, you, you were stuck in fantasy this past year pivoting your quarterback position quite a bit if you didn't have kind of a locked and loaded one of those very, very few consistent quarterbacks. Uh, Burrow and Herbert were injured, Watson injured, Rodgers injured, Richardson injured, Cousins injured, even Daniel Jones went down, and then you had you know a, a slow start for Dak and a hot finish and a hot start for Tua and a cold finish. So you were you were left making some decisions, even waiting for uh, Justin Fields to get back and be uh, what he was before the injury. He missed some time. Trevor Lawrence let people down. So um, it is. I mean, this is re the reason we have a streaming quarterback segment, right? We have a waiver show, but we literally pick out streamers every week because you know matchups, opportunity, injuries, the amount of starters every year. Um, you know, it, it can look really nice sliding a certain name into your roster on a given week. Oh man, I got the I got two up guys. But you know, the Flacco start was going to be a better one, or the mm -hmm. um, you know the pivot to Jake Browning was going to be a better one. So we want to keep you informed with that. We're going to dig into the next set of numbers here. I've been informed that I did not properly introduce this segment. Is that true? Do the drop. You want answers? I think I'm entitled. You want answers? I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! Yeah, now that, I understand why I didn't do yeah, it. Yeah, that wig. 
You know, I didn't um, subconsciously. I must have realized that I wanted to miss that drop. That wig <laughs> is right out of a 1998 clip art. That is what our <laughs> graphics team utilizes. We actually got a full subscription to hey, all 1998 clipart.net. Work, yeah, work smarter, not harder, guys. Yeah, no, that's um, it's a small assortment of options. Number eleven this year, believe it or not, Russell. I don't Russell. Russell Wilson. I do not believe it. Wow, he's 35 now, huh? Russell Wilson. Uh, this was not a player you wanted to play this year. I mean, a consistency rank of 20. By the way, when we break down the truth and I talk about great games, good games, bust games, a great game is 26 or more fantasy points, a good game, 21 or more, a bust game, fewer than 15. He had zero great games. That's a problem. 20% good, so 20% of games over 21, and 27% busts. This was, you know, just as mediocre of an option at quarterback that you could have put on on a team. This he, is like generic. He's the poster child for how bad quarterback play was this season in fantasy. He was a, you know, like you just said, he was, what, the quarterback uh, 11 through the first 17 weeks. And his consistency rating on our website is an F because he just never – scores enough points to be helpful for you in fantasy some players like this are just stat accumulators he plays the whole season he has a high enough the philip rivers yeah exactly where it's like this is not a helpful player for fantasy and you can't look at the end of season rankings and think oh he was okay last he was year. a top i mean he, it's a factual statement to say russell wilson was a top 12 quarterback and there will be somebody that makes that argument next year for russell wilson mm -hmm. when Always. he goes somewhere else yeah and and you're you talking know. about a top twelve quarterback, guys. That's the name of that's the voice of the person. For sure, I, that's a that's a future audio recording. Um, so, but I is it insulting to not want to say another word about him on the show? I don't think we need to because he's not going to be the Broncos' starting quarterback. They've left the door ajar um, that he could <laughs> possibly come back, but it, it's doubtful. I expect him to be cut. I expect him to sign somewhere, and don't draft him. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, it was it was bad. Do we still have the Mike? Do you got the important drop? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. This is a direct quote. Unlimited diarrhea. <laughs> Unlimited. Yeah, that's what you got. So much more exciting to talk about this player. In fact, I think maybe this player is the most exciting to talk about of any of the top twelve we've discussed so far. Mm -hmm. At 12, 22 years old, undrafted for fantasy. C.J. Stroud, with a consistency rank of 7 this year, 13% great games, 40% good games, and 40% bust games. He was actually the third most consistent quarterback in the first half of the year. Yeah, and, and in the second half, he had the game where he you know, did not play a lot, um, got injured, and so that kind of hurts his score. He did. He was starting. That was in that, that disastrous game. Jets game. Yes, exactly. So it's one of those where we we don't delete that. We don't take that out. That that crushed you if you played him that week. Um, but I mean, we know we saw the season. We said it early on. I feel like we were a month into the season, and we were pretty confident that like this guy's the real deal. He just he looks. He sees the field so well. He puts the ball exactly where he wants it. He hits wide receivers in stride. Uh, you know, I, I saw Kurt Warner just talking online about how, like, yards after catch, like, some of that is the ability of the wide receiver, but that's a quarterback stat, too. If, you, if you're hitting someone and stopping their route, they get tackled. If you hit them in the hands, making them run open, they keep running away from the defender. C.J. Stroud does that as good as anybody. I mean, didn't he literally lead the league in yards per game? I believe that he is did. correct, yeah. He did. Yeah, I mean, this 4,100 yards, 23 touchdowns. Way better at home and way better against bad defenses, like Ooh, Mar like the Jared Goff significantly, but also lost Tank Dell, you know, at the end of the year and lost uh, Nico Collins for multiple weeks and Noah Brown and had offensive line injuries to overcome. And when I watch C.J. Stroud, I mean, it is uh, it is not a novel thing to be able to instantly observe the elite nature of his game, but to me, his greatest asset is that he is un flinching in a collapsing pocket he is evasive so he can get out of the pocket but he also will stand in there with his eyes downfield 
and wait and wait and wait. He'll take a hit. Un- incredible arm talent. I mean, this Jason and I, we spent some time, probably a lot of time, musing on how NFL teams miss. You know, like we, we scout for fantasy. And then NFL teams scout. And then they end up with Bryce Young, right? And there's all these questions. And then, oh, C.J. Stroud doesn't – the, the, the uh, Wonderlick. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah, the S2. What oh, a joke that is. Oh, man. And now they're coming out and being like, no, yeah. no, no, no. Have you heard that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. It, was an un, it wasn't a real – yeah, say that then, okay? So <laughs> you can't say that now. <laughs> it, it, it's just a, it's a, it's a strange business. People get it wrong from the professional level on down. But C.J. Stroud was incredible. I mean, yeah. there, there's nothing more he could have done to. But here's now the question. Let's go to fantasy because I'm I'm in full agreement of C.J. Stroud, legit franchise quarterback. But it was. I mean, he had a absolute monster game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, a number one overall finish. Was that like an over forty point? Yeah, he had over an 40. over forty point. I mean, that's a week winning performance. But the uh, the truth of rookie C.J. Stroud was thirteen percent of his games were great, forty percent were good, and it, there. I just uh, the I want to be careful with. He is such a great real life quarterback, but for fantasy purposes. It it wasn't sensational. What I think you look at with Stroud, and that's a, a very fair point, at least this is how I'm going to look at it, is that he's going to slot right into the category of 40 touchdown capable pocket passers that Herbert, Burrow, that department. Like, you go into next year and any of those three players can outperform the other one, in my opinion. That's where I have him. I'm, he's not a tier below that to me. So, um, but his uh, would and his uh, we like Nico Tank, but Nico and Tank are not Jamar Chase and T Higgins. Correct. Like, so the that's what, what my concern for CJ Stroud is. Despite my love for him, is people are going to be really excited to draft CJ Stroud coming into the, to next year. We don't know if he may not they, be on our teams. They may, because yes, of that, and I agree with that. Of Maybe they they the Texans may add someone like I'm I'm not going to put it past them to to go out be really aggressive. T Higgins, yeah, like T Higgins. Yeah. I mean, you put you put T Higgins on Come this on team with, with Nico and Tank Dell. Okay, now now we're talking. But he for we talk about you know the the ups and downs of the pocket passers of we you find a magical year every now and then, but I just want people to be careful connecting C J Strouds and. I mean, I don't know if it's the best rookie season we've ever seen, but it's one of. But will that translate immediately into he's a sophomore and he's going to be worth the draft capital? Because people, people are going to be very, very excited to draft C.J. Stroud. Yeah, it's it's uh, with 167 rushing yards, you you have to be throwing a ton of touchdowns. And and next year, I think we're going to kind of see the push comes to shove on these splits because the. You know, we, we talk about how important those splits were for Jared Goff at home. Talk about the home road split. The home road and the good, bad defense. Those splits for Jared like Goff he, were very, very large. They were like just five got, point different. He got annihilated by Baltimore. Yes. Uh, the, the, so the, my point is C.J. Strouds are even larger than Jared Goff's. Jared Goff, we right. should be talking about, is doing the C.J. Stroud. And so next year we'll see, is he really taking advantage of good matchups? And when you're in a plus matchup, you know, at, at home or in a dome, like, you should be firing him up over everybody because he's going to go out there and throw four touchdowns at 350 yards, no problem. But in a tough matchup, maybe you, maybe he's like the ultimate streamer, but he won't be drafted as that next year because people will be calling their shots that he is the it's next just, greatness. If he's too high drafted, I'll be out on him, and I'll probably look towards Anthony Richardson if he's behind him. Well, and that might make more sense. You know, you go to a rushing quarterback that's five, six, seven rounds behind him. But, I mean, put those names to the test. Like, yes, Burrow has Chase and Higgins, or at least currently he has, does. yeah. But, like, Herbert Herbert hasn't had – I mean, Herbert's weapons are similar to Stroud's. But, I mean, think about the the people that will be in discussion with C.J. Stroud next year, in my opinion, will be Tua, uh huh, Dak, yeah, and probably Purdy, and probably Cousins. Um, because Cousins, I think, if he gets a contract, you're going to come in with Addison – Jefferson, T.J. Hawkinson, 
You know, yeah. are you if you had to call your shot today, Stroud or Cousins, which he, direction are you going to go? I'm going to bet on the guy who didn't tear his Achilles. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think I think Stroud will probably slot in right after the uh Justin Herbert, Joe Burrow. Yeah. Yeah. Tier. And he, right. He's going to he's going to go back and forth depending on your league. Is he in the tier with those guys or is he in the tier with the with the the DAC level, he's back. also very exciting to watch because he's willing to throw the ball deep. Second most air yards per pass attempt, second highest completion. It was the inverse Bryce Young, genuinely. Like watching the two of them play, one looked like a rookie and one looked like a veteran. Also, I've just never seen someone throw a more accurate ball on the move. I that when I see him roll out of the pocket and he's running to his right and he throws it, I know that ball is going to go. Despite him running, I know the ball is going to go exactly where he's wanting. Yeah, and he he's willing to put touch on the ball. I mean, I love it. I love CJ Stroud's progression. He I'll, it'll be interesting to see what the NFL does because I'm just Joe Schmo watching, and I'm like the CJ Stroud tendency of roll out by time and then like that little float pass to the sideline. It's like he keeps doing that over and over. Eventually, a defense is going to. I would think guard for it. I, I think eventually <laughs> I don't, a defense I don't know. will try and stop it. It's just plays break down. He, he buys time. And uh, yeah, Kyle brings up a good point. It, he, they could be losing Bobby Slowick as well. Their OC. Mm. He he is one of the hot names for the head coaching opportunities that are out there. So that will factor in. I I, I, th I think that the, you know the the summary of this is what CJ, a year. CJ Stroud is great and very excited to watch him moving forward. But I'm going to for fantasy purposes be just a little bit cautious good i'm maybe we're all really surprised and cj stroud is like a seventh or eighth round pick and then it's oh this is this is fantastic that's yeah. possible i mean i think it's very possible Dak goes ahead of him i mean i think it's very possible that he's seventh eighth ninth off the board i do love that it's kyle that's like oh he, they could they could lose bobby yeah. slowick <laughs> please please lose because he wants slowick. him in atlanta yeah. yeah he's like atlanta come on take take bobby slowick let's get back to a player we don't have to talk about a lot oh, yeah that sounds awesome nice 13 was Sam Howell. That was Ooh. fun. That yeah. was a fun first half of the year. Yeah. Get the Howell out of here, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I like it a lot. I mean, it's over, right? Oh, it's over. Oh, yeah. They've got, what, the number two pick? Yeah. We don't need to analyze the 30th most consistent quarterback in the second half of the year, the 28th on the year. The empty calories. He this was man. He was awesome the first half. If you played him, so enjoy I, the ride. Yeah, get the I mean, howl out of here. And yeah, he's not going to he play awesome next year. He was awesome a couple times in the first half. He was. He was actually pretty consistent. I mean, he had his uh, the first half of the season. He was number twelve in consistency. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, this was not. Congrats, Sam. You'll be able to show your grandkids you got that one year. It was super fun. He's going to be a backup. Yes. You said that with so much. Like, if you could say that to him, he'd be excited. <laughs> because just. For fantasy, it's it's probably over. But just, I mean, he's got an NFL career. This is like Jameis Winston light season. You know, when Winston yeah, okay. was the starter okay. in Tampa and your defense was awful and you just chucked it around the field. He, You know, the thing is, is that Sam Howell, no matter all of his success, he was terrible for Dotson. He was terrible for McLaurin. He was mediocre yes. for CJ Samuel or CJ, Curtis Samuel. So, um, uh, I, I like this. I like yeah, Kyle. Yeah, go for it. Go for so it. So Kyle put out this tweet. How would you describe the Washington Commanders <laughs> offense in 2023? Give me your best analysis. And so here are the best responses uh, for Sam Howell. Rambo with a Nerf gun. Okay. <laughs> okay. But he's got the face paint. Right. Uh, fantasy celery with enough of it you might just feel full because of the volume, but it's actually extremely uh, nutrient deficient. Uh, a straight to VHS movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Those are fun. That's and yep. it's like ordering a dozen cupcakes, but you receive a salad. Wow. <laughs> which, yeah. Good work, everyone. Which, th let me just say two things. One, that sucks. But two, when you do the opposite, it's so great. Order a salad. Get oh, 12 yeah. Cupcakes. When you order something healthy, yeah. and you're like, dude, I was trying to. That's I, on you. I ordered the grilled chicken I on this I knew that salad. was going to be the grilled chicken, crispy chicken situation. <laughs> yeah, they give you the crispy. Jason's, that's not my fault. <laughs> that's Jason's. He's been down this road a couple times. I could pick them off, but then I won't get my protein. Right. <laughs> I so, Look, all I'm saying is if you are an employee fulfilling orders <laughs> and you see a healthy order come through every now and then, throw in a sweet treat. You're not going to have a Put refund. On you're it. not getting a refund in that situation. No. Oh, you're not. You're, they're not. You're not gonna get you're an upset. You're saying somewhere an employee is going. You know, what? I'm gonna make somebody's day. Exactly right. And please make mine. 
because I want to make a healthy choice, but I want to eat healthy. <laughs> Washington has the second pick. They'll be taking a quarterback. End yeah, of, they will. End of story. Trevor Lawrence at 14, hugely disappointing year. 19% good games, 6% great, 44% bust games. Um, I have the best question for you two to answer. All right. Yes, just, he should shave off the hair. <laughs> shave off? Just go full Whoa. bald? Did you see the picture of him? that They, they had him on the, uh, the Manning cast. And they uh, did they give him Peyton's forehead? They gave him Peyton's and hair and forehead. They look a little too similar. Really? But it was very funny. But okay. go ahead. Here's the question. Can he grow a beard? No. No, God, no. No, I don't think so. Not for another decade. I understand. You 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 have that hair, but you have a beard? I don't know. Might work out. All right. The question is, and this is this is the question I have about Trevor Lawrence. Is he a great quarterback? <laughs> yes yes jason yes because i don't think he is good. Good. He, he is currently <laughs> slotted in as a can have a great game quarterback yeah the consistency thus far in his career is it's um you know hashtag not good no it's not and it, it, you know this year consistency rank was 18 that's terrible. I mean, wasted pick, 100% bust pick in the fifth round. I mean, it, uh, unquestionable. Like, you shoot your shot, like, this is the uh, – This is the concern. concern. This is the – if you took Stroud in the fifth and then you're like, oh, I've now commit. like, people committed themselves to Lawrence. And then they got 832, 18, 16, 16 as fantasy finishes for five weeks. You – no, he's not a great quarterback yet. But he is capable of being the number one on any given week with the right matchup and situation – he he lost some of his weapons at different parts of the year. Um, he's certainly capable of giving you a surprise season because he's the number one pick. In in his defense, if you uh, and the 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 supercuts are out there of watching like the Trevor Lawrence just missed touchdowns. There's so so many, and some of them are Lawrence, the, and a lot of them are on the wide receivers too. So toe tapping on the white yeah, line, it, yeah, like. I the the Trevor Lawrence season I think it could have gone a very different direction. Well, twenty one touchdowns, forward, fourteen picks, and moving forward, I'm not taking the shot. I'm not either. I I don't I don't think he is. And I trade him in dynasty. I don't think he's a great quarterback. And I and I don't say that for fantasy. I mean it, it applies to fantasy. But I'm asking like real life NFL football. The more that I've watched, and we've seen a lot of games now where he's he's clearly got an elite uh, skill set. Like he he's got great arm strength. Um, mobility, mobility. He's he's got the tools, and so he certainly could still develop into what you hoped you were drafting when you were drafting the best prospects with Andrew Luck with the one on one. But we've got enough games where I just don't think he's a great quarterback. I don't think he's going to be. This, it feels like it hurts for you to have to say out loud. Well, yeah, because it's, you because I want I want him to develop into that. Of course, I, I want every quarterback to like reach their potential because it's just good for the NFL, good for fun, good for happiness, is he, joy. Is he a starting NFL starter? Yeah, he's an NFL okay. starter. Would you call right. him like expensive Dak, fantasy-wise? <laughs> yes, I would. I mean, some have said that. Mike's two greatest victory laps are the <laughs> Dak and the expensive Dak this year. Uh, Matthew Stafford finished 15th. He's almost 36 years old. His consistency was 13, but in the second half, he was the fourth most consistent quarterback. So and what happened? Uh, you had healthy Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua together. And Kyron. You had the three Kyron, of them. When yes. you had the three of them together, Matthew Stafford was really, really good. You just didn't have them together a lot, especially in the beginning of the season. Well, and, and to be fair, add in the factor that he was healthy. Because at this stage of his career, that is also a variable present for Matthew Stafford. He is constantly taking hits. Um you know, moving forward, he's not somebody that has the upside to me in fantasy to be more than a streamer. I don't know if you guys disagree with that, but I, at this stage of his career... At this stage, you know who he reminds me of? I know exactly... Uh, Is it Rivers? Uh, no, no, it's not Rivers, because Rivers never had that, like, weak winning potential upside when type of old. play. Right, when he, young when he was, was Sure, young, young Rivers was okay. But he reminds me of, like... 2015, long time ago, Matthew Stafford, <laughs> where for fantasy purposes, he was the guy that you, if you were punting the position, if you're oh, like, I'm man. not drafting a quarterback till the last round. <laughs> and in the last round or the 10th plus round, 
you'd go, well, Matthew Stafford has the, the <laughs> ability, the upside to like really go ham. You did this all the time, year after year, Mike. You would wait until the very yep. last round and you'd grab Matthew Stafford. I think you won a championship I one of those years doing that. And that it, that's just kind of what it seems like. Like nobody's going to want him. Nobody's going to go hard after him. But in the late rounds, if you're really playing that like that late late round quarterback, I think he's going to be a fine pick. I think I think I'm just, I'd just be out on that. I think there's enough higher upside options. I mean, Stafford. I think it's fair to say. I think if you played him every single week this entire year, or I mean, I'm sorry, if you looked at this year, I don't think there was ever a time you could have played Matthew Stafford and been happy. There was one good week, and it was a game you never would have played him in Baltimore. Yeah. And other than that, no I mean, way. so, so yeah, I get it. I mean, maybe you go into the season with a full assortment of tools on the tool belt and that gives you the confidence, but this team can win. The problem is, is this team can win a game with Kyron Williams by himself and, and you don't need Matthew Stafford to throw. I mean, he threw 24 touchdowns. Yeah. I mean, I, w I would definitely push back on the one happy game. I mean, from week 12 through week 16, that, you know, that's, that's six weeks where he was never below a top 12 quarterback. And most that's of those five, weeks was five weeks. Most of those. Yes, it is. Uh, most of those weeks were uh, over 20 fantasy points. So, I mean, yeah, he, he okay. had a good yeah, stretch. He had, a, he had a good stretch. Yeah. But uh, I think what Andy's saying is, like, against Arizona, yeah, I would have played Matthew Stafford. But then against Cleveland and Baltimore, I would not have been willing to play Stafford. I missed out. And then you're like, oh, I'm back in with him against Washington. The You know, the second best matchup of the season, quarterback 12. All I, right. I, did, I think Matthew Stafford is a great – QB two and a great super flex quarterback that you can wait on. Because pa Palmer, like, remember Palmer in what, Arizona? The Carson Palmer was, he, yeah. was he more like that? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Beginning Carson Palmer was electric. not beginning. Uh, Cardinal Palmer. Yeah, like second year Cardinal Carson Palmer was incredible. <laughs> Very specific. <laughs> All right, quick break here, and we'll come back with some big time names. All right, Justin Herbert comes in at 16. He missed the the end of the season. His first half of the season was was electric. It was number five in consistency. He still, oh, even though he missed, what, four games, 15% great games, 54% good, 38% bust, um, lost Mike Williams instantaneously. Huge was, was a huge disappointment. Mm -hmm. Keenan was elite. Eckler was a disappointment, and he still pieced it together. So I, I don't think there's any doubt that a healthy Justin Herbert is a healthy option for fantasy. I, I would agree with that. I mean, Keenan will be back next year. Um, what's the contract situation of Mike look. Williams? I think he's a free agent. He's a free agent. So, so they are going to need to, I think, address this position. I know Gerald oh, wait, Everett. Is he going no, into he, final no, year? He's got one more year. Oh, yeah, that's but he, great. He's super hurt. Right. Oh, wait. Yeah, all the time. But that's yeah. part of the Mike okay. Williams experience. Okay. But um, you know, the the tools should be there to at least start the season well. Obviously, when everybody got injured, uh, including Justin Herbert, it fell apart for him. But the beginning of the year, he was he was outstanding. Like when you drafted Herbert, you felt really good about it for the entire first half of the season. No question. I mean, the the real thing that we'll be watching is what does this team look like? New offensive coordinator potentially. Because if a new head coach comes in, which they will because they need one, they could change the offensive philosophy. You won't have a consistent running back uh, situation because Eckler's a free agent. So I think we're going to come into the year and we're hoping that, you know, let's just let's paint the picture, right? Let's pretend Harbaugh lands in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. You know, suddenly there's going to be a lot of excitement and hype. And I could see a world where Herbert, um, you know, exceeds an appropriate draft spot because of that. Yeah, the the, uh, the only issue I would have there is I think that if Harbaugh comes to town, he will actually fix the defense. And that's been one of my favorite parts of having Keenan Allen and Herbert is like, oh, they're going to have to keep throwing the ball because their defense isn't good. But uh, in general, when you get a good coach, it's, it's good for your team. And so Herbert's great. Uh, the first eight weeks I just looked it up, he was the quarterback four in points per game. So, and, and really the quarterback three, because that only includes one game from Will Levis where he fooled us. Well, and quarterback one, if you take the other guys out. Exactly. You know, exactly. Uh, one of one, one of one, uh, Justin Fields at 17, just, I mean, oh, man, yeah, they're, they're <laughs> Justin Fields it's the, is his graph. is perfection. You know, like multiple, multiple elite games, 
some games where you're just like, this is an absolute disaster. Let me let me give you the numbers. I think there's there's very few players where the actual t- statistical numbers are more intriguing in the grand scheme. Where he passed for two thousand five hundred and sixty two passing yards, sixteen passing touchdowns, nine interceptions. Okay, well, give me the. He ran for six hundred fifty seven yards yeah. and four touchdowns. He busted 54% of his starts, but was great 15, good 46. He was very bad against top 16 defenses. They kind of, you know, if you if you want to make the case for why Chicago's, in my opinion, clearly going to take a quarterback at number one, it's the fact that Justin Fields was hit and miss, right? There wasn't a consistency when it came to, um, I would say, figuring out difficult teams. And that's just been the case for his whole career. Athletically, one of the most gifted in the game that we've seen in a long, long time. And that can mask a lot of problems. But the team has to decide, is Justin Fields part of their future? And then someone like Atlanta has to decide, do they want them to be part of their future? Because there's a lot of rumors of Justin Fields. If he's obviously not going to be their quarterback, he's going to get traded. Yeah. Th- and he, does he start somewhere instantly? He will be very, very interesting for fantasy i i can tell you i will probably be in on him again going into next year we got past the bye week and the injuries um you know they they won a lot of games down the stretch and he played well in most of them now like the final week and an important game to stop green bay it, it looked terrible and that's the that's always been the knock on him is we've had enough games to figure out like you should be getting more consistent and you still have these games where he just doesn't show up. So, yeah, maybe they draft Caleb Williams. The question is, if they draft Caleb Williams, are they keeping Justin Fields and doing the 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 Alex Smith, Patrick Mahomes thing? Or do you trade Justin Fields? And if, if you trade him, obviously the team trading for Justin Fields, I, I believe will probably be trading for him to be a starter. And so I think their offensive coordinator this last year was bad. A, certainly a lot of this falls on Justin Fields. He holds the ball. I mean, he's so frustrating to watch because it's like snap, drop, drop back, hit that back step. Okay, let it go. No, Oh, go to the next read. Okay, let it go. Okay, why are you still holding this ball? And so a lot of that's on him, but also the play designs and play calls that you just see so stupid, like all these little screen plays that they're calling over and over and over. I want to see him with a new offensive coordinator. I do, and he's going to have a new offensive coordinator no matter what. That is true. DJ Moore did finish as the wide receiver six with Justin Fields uh, a big part of that, so he could support a wide receiver one. He was willing to kind of go to you know his best player. That was something we wanted to see. Um, So, you know, it's interesting if you look at what percentage of his fantasy points in his career come from rushing the football. Oh, man. Um, It's 43% historically. Uh, he was 35% in his first season, 53% in 2022, and then 35% again last year. So it's a huge percentage of the equation. It's a huge part of the equation. And that is a um, that is a part of his game that has led to injuries in consecutive years. Like he has had two significant injuries that have left left him off the field. So he will be very, very difficult to assess um we'll see if it you know i do you have a favorite place for him to land like there are some weird like i have a weird one okay and it's las vegas because huh. of the dna of that team what Run they want the to do on defense they're, they're looking at um you know picking up an offensive coordinator that is you know going to be focused on running the football so uh you know it, that would be an interesting destination, but yeah, I mean, it, honestly, Atlanta would be, I think, a good spot if if you get like someone like Sloak to come in. Um, I would like to see the the weapons are there, you know, with with Drake London and Kyle Pitts and Bijan to to be able to have. If you've got a good offensive mind come in, I think that could work for fantasy. And I'm just gonna tell he's still only 24 years old. And he's a one of the best athletes at the position, so I'll 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 still take my. It's shot. just it's funny because you don't know if his career arc is going the way of Mariota at this point. Yeah, and um, you know if he goes in and to compete someplace, he might not win the job. Ultimately, for fantasy, he was a huge bust because you drafted him in the fourth round. Mm-hmm. He's a fourth round pick, and and you know 
you got six weeks where you're happy with two of them, and, and then, then he, he was hurt. So yeah. no, it was a, it was it was certainly a bad pick. He, he was a a good pick up if you got him off of waivers, yeah. um, you know, for the second half of the year, but certainly very bad. But he he also does something that no one else, you know, very few guys can do. Win a week, which is win a week. Yeah. He had five top five performances despite missing four games. Um, if you thought I was looking forward to facing him in the playoffs against Josh, you were wrong. <laughs> right. I was terrified. He is much like Lamar in that yeah. way, where it's like Lamar has these games where you're like, "What? What are you doing? What's going? On? One one touchdown, no touchdown, but he score fifty. He can score fifty points. Yeah, mm -hmm. not so, not many people could do that. Justin Fields can do it. All right, I'm gonna breeze these last guys here because I want to. Derek Carr oh. at 18, consistency of 30. Keep the wind blowing, my friend. Uh, Geno Smith, uh, uh, pumpkin. Um, yeah. This is uh, not a good year. He was drafted as the quarterback 15, but his consistency was 23rd. I'm and throw this out there for just looking at Baker Mayfield next year. <laughs> Baker Mayfield was uh, this year's Geno Smith. Remember we talked about yeah. that early in the offseason? Yeah. And he was. In, he in other words, Baker might. Baker might pumpkin if he comes yeah, back yeah, yeah. to the <laughs> Buccaneers. Uh, Kirk Cousins, no, that's a good one. I, I think Baker, that's yeah, very likely. Um, Kirk Cousins oh, at twenty four, but he missed obviously a huge part of the year. He was playing fantastic. He was and, the quarterback six, and and not just real life football, but fantasy wise, this was like this. It was happening. The Kirk Cousins season was happening. Tearing the Achilles. I mean, we're. I guess we get to have a fun science experiment here of we have two quarterbacks who will be returning from uh, Achilles injuries, and we get to see how they perform. Yeah, it's it's pretty different, though, from my understanding, because you've got Aaron Rodgers has torn his left, his non-planting leg, okay. whereas Kirk right. Cousins well, okay, is on even, the plant leg. Even, even more for science. Yeah. Kirk uh, Cousins was the quarterback quarterback six. He was playing fantastic. He was on pace for 4,953 passing yards along with 38 passing I'm touchdowns not, and I, only 10 interceptions is there a better trifecta of receivers than jefferson addison hawkinson if they're all healthy with a team that like right now doesn't have like a huge running threat and will definitely put it in the hands of their quarterback when the game's on the line like cousins might not go back but if he was back in minnesota um He's old enough to go real late in drafts no matter what. Mm -hmm. Like, there's no way Kirk Cousins is going ahead of C.J. Stroud. Like, no, that's not happening. I don't think so. But your odds of him outperforming C.J. Stroud are probably really good. Yeah, they're probably 50-50. But your odds of him being drafted ahead of him are zero. Yeah, so they, just worthy of knowing the truth of, of Kirk Cousins because by the time we got to this postseason, you'd forgotten he played football. And he was awesome. And then Joe Burrow. Was not awesome. No, Joe Burrow started to show some signs of life after the bye week, but people drafted him in the fourth round, and he was as much he was more of a bust than even Justin Fields was in that stretch. A disastrous first four weeks. The offense couldn't get it going. He was he was playing through the calf injury. And oh yes, we, he was. We blamed poorly. We blamed the calf injury, and I and I'm fine to still blame it and just say, look, he was he was injured. He was playing poor. He got it together, and then unfortunately got injured again with the his wrist. Right. Um, he'll be back. He'll be great. I'm Reminder: not Worried about him. He was a quarterback four in twenty twenty two with forty four hundred yards and thirty five touchdowns. So, um, lost year, right? Lost yeah, year, lost and year. and next year the question will be: Can he be as good without T Higgins? And then, I think a lost year in terms of being part of any story, really. Kyler Murray uh, comes in at twenty six. When he played football, 50% good games, 25% bust. Never had a great game by our 26-point definition, but was okay. Yeah, he was okay. I mean, it, the 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 truth metric likes Kyler quite a bit because he really didn't hurt your team. I think people who had him were just disappointed by two things. One, uh, you know, the fact that you never had a great game. You just never had a monstrous performance. But two, if you actually watched the games, it's really frustrating. There was a lot left on the field, I, yeah. I feel like. That being said, he was coming back from injury, a, a massive injury for a new coordinator, had no weapons really to throw the ball to. And um, going forward, being healthy the full offseason, if you end up knowing, like, right now most mock drafts have three quarterbacks going one, two, three, which means Marvin Harrison Jr., is often slotted to the Cardinals. If that happens, I think Kyler, with his legs and a young stud like that, that he'll be a 
really valuable fantasy. Yeah, it could be really, really sneaky in drafts. And and ultimately, I think I think Arizona ends up with Marvin Harrison or Neighbors at four. So I think a wide receiver might be the right way to look at that in terms of like Arizona's going to probably equip Kyler. They have to. They're going to uh, – we don't know if Hollywood's going to be back, but he's a free agent. Yeah, on maybe. the open market, and and honestly, I don't even know if you want him back. He wasn't good down the stretch. Granted, he was playing with a heel injury, and they don't have any other good wide receivers on the roster. Michael Wilson didn't really get it together as a rookie. The Dorch is just you know a, a run of the mill slot wide receiver for the NFL. I mean, you've got T. McBee, is, Trey McBride looks yeah. to be the real deal. And then uh, yeah, the last name to mention is Anthony Richardson, who we gave him a full rookie breakdown on the Dynasty podcast. So if you want another show to listen to. Make sure you tune into that. Um, he only played four games. He's a quarterback 10 in that stretch. He was awesome. Uh, showed a lot of potential. Obviously can run the football. I mean, we've gone through 25, 26 names. This is exactly why Matthew Stafford will never be drafted by me. <laughs> is because I can craft a better story for 22 of them, including the Richardsons and the Murrays and those guys. Um, I'll be curious what the what the excitement is for Anthony Richardson. Obviously, oh, a, a huge year with uh, Steichen in general, like getting Gardner to play the way he did, and the team looks good. Do they add some weapons at wide receiver? Do they bring Michael Pittman back? I'm going to call it now. Anthony Richardson will not be undervalued. A couple of years ago, he's the perfect type of target where you would be like, he's coming off of an injury. People don't remember how good he was. He's a mobile guy. Draft him late. <clears throat> You're gonna. He's gonna be a mid round pick, as he should be, and I'll still be drafting him there. All right. I think that's it. I think we did it, boys. Yep. Another truth episode in the books. And the truth is, Joe Flacco was a miracle. <laughs> All right. Um, thank you for joining us. Thursday, we'll get into the top ten running backs. The truth at the running back position. Looking forward to it. Shout out to the Deucers back there. Judge Giamatti, Al Borland, thank you for holding it down. Jay Grizz chilling in the back. We'll catch you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.